I'm Susan. Welcome to Plateau Art Studio Art for Kids. I have another fresh month of projects. Let's see what we're going to work on today. Hi, today we've got a uh, folk art cow. So I thought they'd be kind of fun to paint. Um, yeah, you know, the fall in fall, trying to find little fine, fun projects to do of animals. And I, I love cows. So here we have folk art cow. And folk art is, is actually not just painting, but can be made of, um, you can use wood, cloth, paint, clay, metal to make folk art. And it's just decorative. So um, anyway, uh, Warren Kimball is one of my favorite folk artists. And I think if you have had all my projects, I have mentioned him before. Um, and if you've got one of my little packages, my art kits, uh, you'll have a little mini bio on him. And so this is what we're gonna paint today and we're gonna use watercolors. So let's get started with that. And I have uh, already outlined my cow <laughs> in like a black pencil so that it shows up better for you. Um, and I want you to create the draw your own uh, black spots so you can take the time and put me on pause and design your own cow with the black spots, where the black spots are gonna go. You can use a black pencil or just a regular lead pencil to draw that with of where you're gonna paint in the black. Okay, so just revisit me and I'm gonna continue. So you just revisit me as soon as you have all your spotted cow drawn in. And um, all right, so I'm gonna start with, I think, the sky and Again, don't forget that if you are using, I have just these simple little ones that I use for the kids, this kind of watercolors. So I decide to use the same thing so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, and don't forget, they're dry little cakes, so you do need to load up your water and swirl until you get enough paint. So that takes a little patience. So do the best you can, and don't forget to use enough water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there and add some water. Remember with watercolor, you can add water and keep painting with that paint. All right. So the more water and you move that paint around, the lighter that your color will get. So if you want more color, use, you can add more color. But usually the idea is to use enough water. Actually, I'm gonna paint right over his tail, this part, because it's just a line. And then this part I'll leave blank. The hair on his tail. And we'll pull that color over. I have a pretty nice brush here that holds a lot of water in the well of the brush. And it comes to a really nice tip. So I'm able to get in to little tiny areas and big areas with this brush. And your paper might curl a little bit if you get a lot of water. Remember, try not to get any petals. If you get um, too much water, just keep painting with it, or you can pick some of that water up. Remember, you can dab and dry your brush off, and you can pick up the water with a dry brush, and then just kind of keep dabbing it off. So that's one way to control any unwanted puddles. I'm going to paint with this color I put on there. Paint. 
I have white paper down and I always put like another piece down so that I can paint right to the edge and not worry about getting it on my art mat or something. Okay. <clears throat> now let's see. I'm gonna go right up to his back, around his little ear. There, maybe it's a girl. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now there is a spot right here underneath the cow, in between the cow and the field. That's blue. So I want to make sure I get that blue. And I have a pretty good amount of water and paint right here. I'm just going to keep painting with it. Keep pulling it towards me. There we go. There. And there's a little spot right here between the legs. There we go. Okay, there's my sky. Now I'm going to start on my cow. Now, if you want to keep this white part white, then just leave it. You don't have to paint it. But on my sample, I had I kind of made this really pale, pale, real pale peach. And I thought that was kind of pretty. So if you want to do that, I took a tiny, a little bit of kind of a yellowy orange. orange or even brown brown works you can just use a little brown wash your brush and get some white okay you can kind of come up with a really light color I don't like that it's very kind of a tan so I'm gonna add a tiny tiny bit of red oh now it's now it's kind of rose isn't it so I'll go back to my yellow. Kind of play around between your yellow and brown and red till you get something you like. I kind of like that. There we go. Maybe a tiny bit more. There. All right. So it's kind of a kind of a peachy color. You can see that very well. Oh, I got water there. <laughs> So now I'm gonna wash my brush and add some white. And it gets it kind of peachy now. And then I can add water to it. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead, anywhere that I'm not gonna put black, I'm gonna use this really light, light peach color. And I'm going to use a lot of water to paint with because I want it really light. Maybe you want a pink cow. Pink and black. I don't know. It's your artwork. You decide. <laughs> but I can keep painting with that. Alright? Just keep using a little bit of water. I have to come up with a project where we really let the colors kind of bleed into one another and blend. That'll be really fun. This is very controlled. So just be real careful you don't pick up the blue. There. Okay, so I think I'm just about done there. And for the udder, um, I'm going to add a little tiny bit more pink. That's a lot. 
just a little with my peach. I'm gonna take some off because it's a lot of color. There we go. It's very pastel. Now, we're, again, if I'm going too fast, put it on pause. And then you always revisit me when you are ready. Okay, so now we're gonna start with, we'll finally do the black. Now black, you're just gonna have to swirl to get enough black. So it won't be like, really dark black but and you can turn your um, turn your work around to work on the areas okay so I'll do this and it's kind of the same concept of what we were been doing but I'm gonna use more paint on this part I don't want to thin it down too much because I want a dark color. But you should have enough water to move it around. If you start getting a dry brush stroke, you need a little more water. puddle there that I pulled over that paint. And I'll go around his ear. I'll put a little pink, leave a little tiny white area for his ear. And since I had mixed that kind of pink fleshy color, I can put that in his ear. There we go. Okay, so just keep working on those black spots, whatever whatever spots you came up with. You can always download them on my email site. It's um, yeah, I'll give you the, the site. It's a PAS Plateau Art Studio. PAS at kits for kids at gmail.com. Would love to see, and then I can post them on my website. What you've done with your cow. It would be really fun to see. I'd love to see your work. All right. Don't forget his tail. I'm gonna paint his tail in. There we go. Almost done. A lot of folk art has little, like a tree or a little barn way off in the distance, which would be in the background. We've talked about depth and foreground, background. The cow is definitely in the foreground. <laughs> He's in the front foreground. That's what that means. And since he's so large, he is the main subject. If you wanted to draw or paint a small, tiny little barn and tree in the background, it'd be like way off in the distance in the field. That would be in the background. And that would also create what we call depth something small in the background. Okay, how's everybody doing out there? Hopefully you're keeping up. Don't ever feel like I'm going too fast. Just put me on paused to finish what you're doing. Everybody works at a different pace. Everybody does. And everybody has different skills so if you're just starting out just do the best you can and have fun with it that's 
what it's about is exploring the colors and how the paint moves and how to paint with watercolors. They can get really runny if you use too much water. Which sometimes is really fun to let the, if you experiment on a separate piece of paper, you can, um, there, there's my cow. Now I'm gonna just use a tiny bit of paint that's on my brush to do his hoofs there. There we go, there we go. It looks like I got a little bit of black paint in his eye. So I can dry my brush and take that off. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the field. And I really, really like this light color green. I think it's kind of a little happier than a dark green. So I'm going to um, swirl my paint, get enough water in there. Be patient for that color. All right. I really like this one of my favorite greens. I call it, I call it apple green because it reminds me of the bright apple green color of a Granny Smith apple. And just try to not go too close because I still have wet paint in the black and the last thing that you want is your black paint to get into your other colors. So stay away from that and just go around it. Don't get, you can leave a tiny little white edge if you want. There's no problem in doing that. Okay. Okay, we're almost done. Our fun little folk art cow. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some other colors now. I have this really nice green and a field isn't all just one color green. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit of brown here and there and just let it kind of work into the colors. In the background there might be a little shadow under the cow. Maybe it's a little darker green. Maybe you want a darker green down below. You kind of mix them and see what you get. But I do have water on here, so I will get a really nice blend. It will just sort of fade into one in itself here. So I really like working with not just one color. So I do have quite a bit of water there. I don't want any puddles to form, but there. So there's kind of some different colors in there. I like that. It creates a little interest and depth there. So I did have a big drop there. I don't care. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Maybe it's a funny little cloud going through. I don't know. But if you want to do that, you can make clouds by doing that. And kind of I'll show you a little something here. We'll put some water out. Some little puddles of water. And watch this, all right? We're gonna let them sit for a second. And watercolor paper is great for this. So I now I have these little puddles. I don't know if you can see them very well, but they're sitting on there. And, I, and I'm just gonna let them get the watercolor paint wet again. And then I can pick them right up. And I have clouds. How about that? That's kind of fun. So there you go. That's kind of how we remedy that. And I hope you had fun with our folk art cow today and um, a fun little way to make some clouds and blend your colors. And um, I will see you next time. So stay safe and healthy and I can't wait to 
tune in next time and we'll have another fall project okay <laughs> bye bye hey thanks for joining me today i hope you enjoyed the projects i'll see you next week i look forward to it bye bye